guys, it's Maria. Today, we're going to talk about global warming. I know this is a new topic for my channel, but it's something that I'm very passionate about that I haven't really shared on here. On this channel, I've mainly focused on art-related topics, but I do want to focus on more environmental and biology topics because it's something I'm very passionate about. So I wanted to start off by talking about global warming and telling you guys a little bit about it and what exactly is it. Global warming is the gradual increase of the overall temperature of Earth's atmosphere. So why is the Earth warming up? We'll get to that in just a minute. First, I'm going to tell you what the greenhouse effect is. The greenhouse effect is basically how the Earth keeps its warmth. Now, as most of you know, this is because we have an atmosphere. If we didn't have an atmosphere, like let's say the Moon or Mars, the Earth would be very cold. But why exactly is this? Here's the Sun and here's the Earth. Sunlight comes from the Sun into the Earth, it easily passes the atmosphere and it hits the surface of the Earth. Now, some of the sunlight gets reflected back, which is what we see as colors, as light. But also some of the sunlight gets absorbed by the objects. This sunlight can't stay in an object, so it gets transformed into heat energy, also known as infrared radiation. This infrared radiation, or heat energy, leaves the object and gets released back into the atmosphere. Now, some of this heat leaves the atmosphere back into space, but some of it gets trapped in the atmosphere and bounces back to us. How is this possible? Let's talk about exactly what is in the atmosphere. 78% of it is nitrogen, 21% is oxygen, 0.04% is carbon dioxide, and the rest is just gases that we're not going to worry about right now. Carbon dioxide plays a really big role in keeping us warm. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. So what exactly is a greenhouse gas? Greenhouse gases are molecules made up of three or more atoms, like carbon dioxide. So let's go back to the other two gases that we talked about. Oxygen and nitrogen are made up of two atoms, so they are not considered greenhouse gases. Carbon dioxide is made up of three atoms. This is very important. As we talked about earlier, the sunlight that gets absorbed by the Earth gets released back into the atmosphere as infrared radiation. As I explained, some of this infrared radiation goes back into space, but some of it gets trapped in the atmosphere. Infrared radiation goes through oxygen and nitrogen or other molecules containing two atoms. However, it does not go through greenhouse gases. It gets trapped in them and then released again. Some of this released energy does go back into space, but some of it bounces back into our atmosphere. So I know this was a little wild and hard to comprehend, but basically, sunlight goes into the Earth, the Earth absorbs it, changes it into heat energy, this heat goes back into the air and the atmosphere, some of it leaves, but some of it gets trapped in carbon dioxide molecules and gets released back into the Earth. So that is basically how the greenhouse effect works. It's the same thing as a greenhouse. If you have a greenhouse here, sunlight passes through the glass, gets absorbed by the plants, and that gets transformed into heat energy, and the heat is stays inside the greenhouse. Now that that is said, let's look at global temperature from the 1800s up until now. As you can see, temperature was a lot lower before than it is now. It's important to know that there have been periods in the Earth's history that have been a little bit warmer and some that have been a little bit colder. However, there has never been a period where temperatures rise so dramatically and so quickly as they have been in the past few hundred years. We need to understand that there is a direct correlation between the amount of carbon dioxide that's in the air and the Earth's temperature. The more carbon dioxide there is in the atmosphere, the warmer Earth is going to be. Scientists have seen this over the years of measuring the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere versus the temperature. So how exactly do scientists know how much carbon dioxide there was in the atmosphere hundreds of years ago? The answer is found in the Arctic. In the Arctic, every time it snows, a small layer is formed in the surface with snow, which also contains little air pockets of whatever gas that is in the air at that moment. Then the following year, it snows again and a new layer is formed. Over the years, these layers freeze up and the little air pockets that were in there form little air bubbles in the ice. Years and years of this form a history of what gases are in the atmosphere. So what scientists have done is they dig really long holes and get these long tubes of ice and you can actually see different layers of ice representing a different year. Now scientists can take these layers, find the little air pockets, and measure the amount of each type of gas in there. 
This is how scientists know exactly how much carbon dioxide was in the atmosphere hundreds of years ago and can compare it to now. So why has there been more carbon dioxide in the last few years than there was before? Carbon dioxide is naturally produced by animals and plants through respiration. However, it's also produced in factories and any gas emission that we humans produce. So is global warming our fault? Well, sadly, yes. Before the Industrial Revolution, there was a very steady, constant amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Of course, it varied little by little, but not drastically. However, after the Industrial Revolution, those levels of carbon dioxide peaked and are still increasing very rapidly. I know this all seems very overwhelming, but what can we as individuals do to help? Try to buy locally produced products. This way, you can make sure that the product you buy hasn't traveled too far. The more a product has traveled, the more gas and energy it has used to get to you. So the closer it is to you, the less carbon dioxide it has been produced. Walk, take your bike, take public transportation. Although right now with the pandemic, that's a little harder, but those are good options when the world is not in chaos. <laughs> Try to get energy efficient appliances for your home. Try to get things that don't use too much gas, too much energy. Use solar powers. I'm so happy that more and more houses are now required to be built with solar panels. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Turn off the TV, the lights, the fans when you leave a room. What's the point in leaving something running when you're not even there? If you go on a trip, leave your air conditioner or heater off and your lights. You're not there, you don't need it. You can just turn them back on when you get back. Try to use less water. I know this is a little bit hard, but if there's something you can do to reduce the time you're in the shower or washing the dishes, try your best to just use less. And most importantly, stay informed. Know where you get your food from, where you get your products from, know the impacts of everything you do, know how to help. And I know sometimes it's overwhelming to think that one little thing you do is not gonna make a difference, but trust me, one little thing makes a difference. If everybody has the mentality that, oh, I'm not gonna do anything because my impact is not big enough, then yeah, nothing's gonna happen. But if everybody had the mentality of my one little action is gonna make a big difference, many little actions make a huge impact and a huge difference. So all we can do is try our best, stay informed, see what the future holds with our improvements and our little impacts. There is so much more that I could get into this topic, but I think this is gonna be it for today's video. If you want more science-y videos, let me know. I love science, I love biology, I love talking about these things. As you can see, I'm very passionate about it. So if you want more of this content, let me know. I would be happy to share more with you guys. But don't worry, the art content is still gonna be here. I'm still gonna be making hot sculptures, I'm still gonna be making art, I'm still gonna be the same Maria you know. But now, I might add a little bit of science here and there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you learned something, consider giving me a thumbs up and sharing this video with somebody else, and let's all work together to make this world a better place for everyone. I love you guys, and I will see you next time.